I'm here with Professor Eduardo Miranda, the director of the Contemporary Music Festival. Tell me about this year's festival. How has it grown from previous festivals? This year is our 14th festival, so we've been, um, um, I would not say growing, but we have been steadily getting um, um, more uh, solid in the, um, the contemporary music uh, scene in Plymouth and in the UK. And this year, I think the, um, the growth, so to speak, of the festival is connected with the, uh, the development of the research that we have been doing in, at the Interdisciplinary Center for Computer Music Research. The, the festival is mostly a showcase of the technologies, the ideas and the compositional methods that we developed uh, on the research side. And this is reflected at, in the, the, the repertoire that we, uh, we present every year. Tell me about this year's theme of multiverse. What does it represent? It's a theme that um, uh, every year we try to, to connect, um, the, uh, to find a theme for the festival that would represent the state of the art of the research that we are doing. And, um, one of the main um, new areas of research that we are starting to address is the relationship between quantum physics and, and music and also um, how um, this uh, interrelationship may lead to new methodologies for musical composition and also for understanding music. And, um, the more we begin now to look into the, uh, the quantum physics uh, theory, the more we realize that you know, we don't understand um, it yet. And uh, there are several interpretations of, uh, of the quantum world. One of them is the multiverse interpretation, which sees the world as having multiple versions of itself. And this connects quite well with, um, with music and arts because artists, poets, writers, our jobs is to create parallel worlds, not worlds that are necessarily real, but imaginary worlds, fictional worlds. And this relates um, extremely well with our creative side in, in, in the research and also the more scientific look that we have. Tell me about the research story behind the festival program. We are developing several uh, strands of research and, and all of them converging towards ways in which we can make music, harnessing new kinds of technologies. Um, for, for instance, we are harnessing uh, new, um, uh, more modern forms of artificial intelligence models to build new musical instruments, new systems to, to interact with composers to, to, to make music. We are looking into um, harnessing um, new kinds of computers to make music. But as we know, computer technology is evolving. And it's m most likely that the technologies of the future will play a key role in the music of the future. So we, as musicians and composers, need to engage with these new technologies in a very active way to find um, ways in which these uh, can generate new ways of composing, new, new creative methods. Um, for example, I can cite the, uh, the work that we are pioneering here in Plymouth, which is to, uh, to investigate what can be done with new kinds of processors, for example, quantum processors, quantum computers, biological processors, all these things are the new artificial intelligence of the future, which we are exploring in this, in this festival. We'll be joined by University of Oxford physicist Vlatko Vedral for a talk prior to the research concert. What will he be discussing? The understanding of the subatomic world is something that escapes our understanding of the reality around us on, the, on a daily basis. So it's very difficult to explain what's going on in a world that we don't see and we don't even perceive it with our senses. So, um, and, and I think Vladko has a, a talent to explain things um, uh, in very clear ways. 
and um, I'm hoping that he will clarify a number of things for us, um, which will perhaps uh, excite our, our imagination and perhaps gain a better understanding of the musical and the creative um, pieces of work that we are trying to compose with this new understanding of, of the world. So, you see, the creative, uh, the creative aspect of the human mind is not understood. The, the physics of the human mind is not understood either. So can these misunderstandings help each other and perhaps shed new light into the way you know, we can um, um, shape our future? Tell me about Lampedusa. Lampedusa is an opera that um, resulted from um, many components that um, converged towards an, an idea. Musical composition, especially opera, relies on, on, a, on a language that is already, um, you know, that exists already. So if composers are inventing new music, new methods to compose music, why not invent also the language that is, you know, that, that is used in, in musical composition? And how about, for example, why not? try to do something that is pre-Shakespearean, that's a prequel to one of the Shakespearean plays. Then we came up with the idea of the Tempest. So the Lampedusa is allegedly, um, after a, a number of, um, uh, of queries we made around uh, to experts in, in, in Shakespeare, w where is the island that the Tempest took place? So one of the uh, one of the hypotheses could be the island of Lampedusa in the in the Mediterranean Sea. So we okay. So maybe we could then um, write uh, what happened in this island before Prospero and Miranda arrived in, the, in there. So what 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 is happening there? How um, how Caliban came to exist? How Sycorax came to exist? And Ariel? Who is Ariel? So all these uh, entities that appear in the Tempest, we wanted kind of, let's build this, let's make this parallel multiverse world um, that is parallel to, to the Shakespearean world. And um, it, it evolved, the, the, sto the story evolved um, in, a, in a way in which, you know, uh, we think that it's a good representation of what happened before the Tempest uh, play. Um, Sikorax basically is a refugee from Europe um, trying to flee the Inquisition. And then she gives birth to, uh, to Caliban in the island. But I'm not going to reveal the whole story now. Um, I think uh, it's a surprise um, how the, the plot develops. But it's sung in an artificial language. The music has been generated um, using the methods that we developed in the lab, and the, uh, basically it's all made in-house. In uh, the costumes, the visual design, the directorship, uh, the, the only people that are not part of the university in this production are the BBC singers. What influence did your research work with MIT Media Lab in the USA have on Lampedusa? Right, that is an, another aspect of this multifaceted um, piece of work. So I went to MIT to talk to colleagues there um, because I knew that they were uh, collaborating with CERN in Geneva to make sounds from data taken from the particle collider, uh, the, 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 high, the High Hadron Particle Collider at, uh, at CERN. So in conversation with them, we uh, we started to work on, on a method to take this particle collision data and transform them into musical, musical data. And then with this musical data, I would then compose the music for the opera. So the aspect here is that we have the very basic research that's investigating the origins of your universe. And this data is being used to compose the music for the opera Lampedusa, which is about another universe. So um, the, the connection with the science here is, is this, the very basics of you know, the creation of the universe that we live in, which could have been very, very different 
and why not a universe like Lampedusa? Well, thank you very much, Professor Eduardo Miranda. It sounds like it's going to be a, a fascinating festival for the general public and a great showcase for the research here at the University of Plymouth. Thank you. That was a pleasure.